thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just going to warn you now, I might get disturbed because my husband has asked me to take him, uh, well, follow him to the car garage so he can leave his truck there basically and then come back in my car. It's not, not far to go to, but um, he's had to nip out uh, work purposes and he's going to be coming back and probably going to want to do that straight away. So I don't know if I'm going to have to stop this video and come back and finish it later. Um, I've actually read notes today uh, in my old videos I never used to write notes I used to basically chat and chat and chat about whatever popped into my head then I started writing notes but because I've been doing quite regular videos i would got out of that habit of writing notes again but I have been forgetting a few things so I have got a few notes today it's something I, I did on my phone I've screenshot it but then I think I've added to it and I've not done a fresh screenshot but never mind hopefully I'll try and remember a few things now following on from my last video uh, you You'll have seen that I made the um, the Jamie pajama shorts by Tilly and the Buttons, and I'd used the fat quarters, and I and I told you about all the fiddling around that had. I had to do that basically I had to use a non-directional print for the bottom pieces because they wouldn't fit if you did them the right way up so if you had a directional print they would have been sideways so I chatted to you about that and I told you I'd done the French seams and I spoke a bit about using the one step buttonhole and trying to use that a bit more than doing my four step buttonhole because obviously I have to get my old machine out and things so anyway I had some lovely suggestions because as you know I'm trying to pick um, um, an outfit for Alfie is the uh, boy version of the lunar lapping rabbit and I didn't know what a stir that was going to cause uh, like you know so many people have gone out and um and purchased the book after my video it's been a bit crazy and uh, excuse me and I haven't got you know a massive amount of following you know I've got well I know I've reached 500 subscribers so I don't know what it's on now, but you know what I'm saying? Compared to other people, um, you know, because I think sometimes it really helps when you get a shout out by some uh, someone who's got a lot of following, and uh, you know, it does help like boost the channel and things. So uh, maybe I'm not I'm not getting mentioned. By, maybe people don't. Other YouTubers don't like mine. I don't know. Be a Becky notes from the sewing room um, has mentioned me, and I think Cameron from So Little Time, but I don't think I've ever. Had had a mention not from anyone big anyway you know so never mind maybe one day but uh, but at least uh, you know it's a bit more manageable isn't it so anyway um people uh, suggested um well actually two people suggested that I made Alfie a shirt from the button print fabric from my um shorts but unfortunately because I'd used the button fabric on my bottom piece there wasn't enough there wasn't much at all left from that. Uh, I did want to use, make the most of it. So I had two, um, three fabrics. I had a good bit of something left, which I've kept. I might have put back on my fat quarter shelf, actually. I don't normally do that. Once I've cut into fat quarter, it doesn't usually go back onto my fat quarter shelf, but I think I, ha I might have put it back on there. Uh, but the two fabrics I used on my bottom, I'd got this really small, awkward piece. And uh, often I might trim them down and put in my quilting baskets. But I had a look at them and I thought, oh gosh, I thought scrunchies. So um, I would normally do my scrunchie pieces a little bit longer, but you have to do what, you, what, what you've got. And I think I did my fabric pieces 15 inches long. I think I did them three and a half inches wide. And I think I did my elastic seven inches and and it was a quarter of an inch elastic that's just what I had I would use bigger elastic maybe I'd use smaller but the, when they're wider they're a little bit easier to sew so half inch elastic would be a little bit easier to sew together than the quarter of an inch fabric that I've used uh, elastic sorry not fabric so uh yeah so I made a couple of scrunchies uh, I haven't photographed I've got a bit of thread I haven't photographed them or anything but that's the one with the buttons on it and that's the one with the yarn uh, balls on it and the knitting needles so I'm really pleased with those I've not photographed them um did I uh, oh do you know what I did do um I did do a little video of me telling you what I did maybe I'll stop talking now and I'll pop that in for you to see okay I'll see you in a minute I had a look what I had left over from my um 
Jamie pyjama shorts by Tilly and the Buttons and I decided that three of the pieces were quite substantial so I've decided to fold them up and keep them for another project but the two pieces that I'd used on my bottom the button print and the yarn balls and knitting needles they were quite scrappy pieces so I've decided to turn those two into scrunchies so I couldn't be too fussy on the length because I just had to go with what I had left I will just measure those so I'm just putting a, a ruler here. That one's just under 15 inches. That one is just over 15. So what I'm going to do is I've um, sewn scrunchies many times. I've tried all different ways, uh, but this is my preferred method. So I've turned the fat. Oh, I haven't told you what I've cut them. I've cut them at three and a half inches. That can vary, but that's what I've cut them this time. And... I'm going to start stitching two inches away. I'm gone. Here we go. Two inches away from the end, all the way down here, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but it doesn't matter a great deal, till two inches away from this end. And I'm going to do that with that one. This will make sense later on. If you line your fabric up with that notch, can you see a notch in the middle of the sewing machine foot? I'll try and see there's like this gap here and then in the middle there's a notch there if you line your fabric up with that notch the distance then between that and your needle should be about a quarter of an inch so you don't need a fancy foot or anything so just basically go forwards and backwards a little bit so and then sew down to the pin that I told you about and go forward and backwards and then I'll see you at the next stage. Now I've got to turn them the right way out so I've attached a safety pin to one of them. I'm going to work the safety pin up the tube and then it should be the right way out and I'm going to do that with the other one. Now I've turned those in uh, the right way round. Now you get your edge like that and open it out and you get your other edge and do the same and you place them right sides together you line up and okay, it's a bit fiddly trying to watch what i'm doing through the phone line that up like that just pop a couple of pins in oh that pin's coming out sorry about this well it's funny isn't it when you go on camera and you go all thin fingers and thumbs So I hope you can see what I've done there. They're right sides together. Now I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam along there on both of them. Now cut a piece, uh, well two, I'm cutting two pieces of elastic. Um, I've took some elastic, I, it looks like I've picked it off something. I've, it's definitely been used before. But I've cut those at, what have I cut them at? About seven inches. And uh, the thickness, they look about a quarter of an inch. You could use thicker elastic, but that's just what I've got. Then what you want to do now is thread that through with a safety pin through that hole and come out the other side. It, sometimes it's worth attaching the end with a pin here or a safety pin, another one sometimes. Attach that so you're not going to lose the end. So you, you thread that through like this. And you just hope that your end is still there when you get there. Yeah. Bring those two ends together. And then you're going to overlap them and stitch those down. Uh, I sometimes, you can go up and down, you can go in a box, do whatever your preferred way of sewing elastic is. The elastic needed a little bit of encouragement to uh, go through the sewing machine. Now you see we've got a hole and that's stitched together. Now what you're going to do is turn this under like this. Now you can either hand tack this with a ladder stitch or you can just do a top stitch along there now you can either just do the top stitch along the hole or all the way around whatever you prefer to do i think i'm just going to top stitch over the hole and there we go two hair scrunchies 
So I hope you've seen that. Hopefully I haven't deleted it. Otherwise you've just sat there um, looking at me just doing nothing for a few seconds. So what I have to do is I have to put a split in my video and then I have to insert things kind of thing. I'm, get, I'm getting a bit more technical as time goes on with these videos. So so uh, basically I didn't show you a photograph of the shorts on uh, in my last video when I talked about them I just showed you them so I'll pop a photograph um, of the shorts on now and it was a really fun thing to do I do explain a bit more about you know what I did and you know in the last video so I don't want everyone to get you know really excited because I think it all depends on what size you're going to cut and I do make a suggestion of another shorts pattern you can use that would use less fabric um, for those shorts so, and that's a till in the buttons as well but I do explain it's a more involved pattern it's clusters and improvers because they do French seams but you could not do French seams and just do a five eighths of an inch seam or a 1.5 centimeter seam um, in those uh, or you know alternative ones if you want if you was a bigger size and you wanted to make fat quarter shorts what was quite funny actually what I did notice I looked at my post on Instagram um of my shorts and I said what I made but I didn't mention that they were pajama shorts so anybody that like is like really into their dressmaking uh like they're going to know aren't they what the Jamie shorts are by tilting the buttons of their pajamas but um and most of my following um are sewers and things and knitters and crafts people but the odd friend um you know i i don't make a big song and dance about my my craft things with my you know people i know personally i kind of keep it kind of separate but occasionally people i actually know in person do end up following my craft page kind of thing and uh, they can't sort of, like find it and stuff so um so what i was going to say about that so they might not know so they might think gosh um those are a bit wacky and actually i spoke to my mom and I told her that I forgot to mention, she'd, oh yeah, I did think they was a bit, I said about them people thinking a bit wacky, she'd, I did think they was a bit wacky, Claire, when I saw them. I thought they're not really Claire's kind of thing, but uh, but she totally understood when they were pyjama shorts. So yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should edit my post and say I've made the, you know, what it is, I don't really like writing pyjama, right, on, I know this sounds really silly, on, um, on social media because americans and english people um or english language they spell pajama differently and i don't want to spell it the american way because you know english people are going to think wow you can't spell pajamas like i'm not i'm not actually very good at spelling i will admit that so i'm you know I'm not, I'm not good at spelling, but I do know how to spell pajama in English and in American. So, uh, but then I, do, then I think, well, it's an English pattern. I should write pajama in English, but I don't want Americans and think you can't spell pajamas because I have wrote the word pajama in English uh, in a group, and I've had people like trying to correct me. Do you know what I'm saying? So I try and avoid the word pyjama. And I've, I've even abbreviated it and put PJ. Because in the UK, we'll say, oh, you know, go and get your PJs for short. But I've had Americans going, what are PJs? So <laughs> there's a bit of a barrier language, isn't there, sometimes? It, even though American language should be, it is basically is English, isn't it? You know, because obviously not native American, but, you know, because obviously we basically settled there, didn't we, all those years ago? And, uh, yeah, but there's so much difference, isn't there, that some of the differences really make me laugh actually because uh you know things like with do you know like if we crocheted a blanket they would call that an afghan you know an afghan here is if like an afghan hound a dog or an afghan coat some dodgy looking coat from the 70s you know what i'm saying so there is a bit of a language barrier anyway i'm going to go on to what i'm wearing you might have noticed i'm in something new and it's my most recent post um on social media and uh, and i'm absolutely delighted with it actually the photo looks really nice as well i think i look 
like really futuristic like I could be uh, on a spaceship in the future that had a white interior kind of look about it you know because I wasn't really sure when I looked at the fabric if it was going to look a bit wishy-washy kind of thing but I'm absolutely delighted with how it's come out and, uh, and basically the pattern is the Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress uh, basically it's about Southbank sweater there's three versions there's version one which is this one the dress version two which is like a mid-length one and version three which is a cropped one and on the pattern pieces you draw the lines differently you actually taper in round here more but the the second one the mid-length one you don't you do it the same shape as the dress so I thought you might find that interesting to know I'll just stand up for you to have a look I'll put some photographs in anyway so I've put the pockets in I know not everybody puts the pockets in them but yeah because some people don't like extra bulk kind Kind of on the on the hip area kind of thing but um i'm a bit socially awkward and i have a a, a blooming big phone it's so it's really, so it's good to have somewhere to put your hands if you're feeling a little bit awkward i do have um a thing i don't i i haven't uh so nobody has said this is the condition you've got but i've figured it out i have a condition where all my fingers go white like a yellowy white color and um and if say i went out in the snow and i didn't have good gloves and things i have actually passed out when i come back indoors uh if all if too many of my fingers go like that when i come back indoors i will pass out i think it i've really tried to figure out what it i think it's called reynards but i don't i don't know for sure if that's what it is but um but yeah that's what i think i've got so uh i do like i do basically wear ski gloves um for a lot of the months and uh, you know if you see me out in these big massive big gloves because i you know just have to wear them like i can get the get it from literally just holding a drink that's you know that's been in the fridge say if i poured myself a glass of coke out the fridge and i held it um that finger will go or i can uh, be getting laundry out uh, in my utility because at the moment there's no radiator in my utility because it used to be uh, an extended part of the original kitchen when we moved in here and it had an archway so there would so we've ended up moving the kit we knocked a wall out into the back room so we have the kitchen in the original bit of kitchen plus the back room and then the uh, the kitchen that was the extension that somebody else did we put a door on it and made that the utility because the utility in this house used to be a part a section in the back of the garage but we ended up knocking that out and turning it into a whole garage and now that's an actual room so we've made changes and we're making changes again the kitchen is going to be getting moved again but anyway what why was I saying this uh, it was because of my fingers so sometimes when I go in there and I get uh, wet washing out of the washing machine I normally find, sorry, it looks like I'm sticking my fingers a bit. I normally find those two fingers that I'm touching will go go white, yellowy white. And then it might just be those. And, and then sometimes it just goes numb. And I, the, yesterday, I think it was, they were really painful. It was really awful. So this isn't on my notes, by the way. I didn't put this on, so I'm going to talk about my hand condition. And all the, look, I've got a load of funny things allergies sensory issues a lot of weird stuff but you know i could go on and on about that couldn't i anyway let's go to alfie well i'll tell you what i've done um i wanted to dress alfie didn't i and then i mentioned to you when i made luna now i found out that i made luna in 2018 which is 2001 now if you've what if you're watching this video in the future so uh i remember wanting to make a boy straight away and i, I keep, kept promising myself every easter so that would have been 2019 2020 so and this year so i've probably started three years in a row thinking i'm going to make that boy rabbit by easter but at least third time lucky i've made him haven't i but i have made uh, i have been doing a couple of things to luna now you've seen last time i've repressed her coat and used a clapper and it gave it a lovely crisp look 
but I've actually, I haven't changed her eyes. I basically, I wrapped cling film around her eyes and I used, it wasn't the Sharpie brand, but it was like a Sharpie and I coloured her eyes in black because I thought she looked a bit washed out kind of look. Do you know, like next to, uh, you know, Alfie. Was I calling him Archie? He's, I didn't call him Archie, did I? Alfie. So, yeah, so I think they look, you know, more like brother and sister now, don't they? So, yeah, so they're absolutely delightful. Well, as you can see, Alfie is still naked. Now, he, he has caused a bit of a stir, really, in this house. Because what's happened is I've gone looking at fabrics to see what I've got to basically dress Alfie. I've just realised I've put my tripod with my phone. It's always wonky. Let me straighten it. Sorry. I think it doesn't like being straight. Right, that looks... What it is, it's that Kallax. Look, see, there's a bigger gap there. It just, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it, because what it is, when I put my phone in it, I do slightly put it that way because the um, there's a button on my phone and it will start messing it up. So I have to make sure I clear that button. So maybe it's extra weight that kind of tips it on its side kind of thing. Well, what happened is uh, I had a look, went looking for my tweed. Now I've got a wool acrylic um acrylic tweed that I made that I bought basically from Minerva to uh, I was a pattern tester for the willow coat for Jennifer Lauren handmade back in October and um, I didn't end up getting sh to share that till December because as a pattern tester um, you're not allowed to share it until release day like I was a bit of a newbie to this I did share a bit of a collar picture pre-release day but the designer had also shared a pi the same picture, but in her coat. So I f kind of felt it was okay. But um, when I'd made it, I was so itching to show it. And then I found out I couldn't actually show it. Well, anyway, I knew I had some fabric left. So I went to have a look because I thought, well, I could make some little rabbit clothes with it. Anyway, when I got to it, I was really quite surprised how much I had left. And I was, was been thinking I was going to make the Brompton, I think it's the Brompton, bag by um, Fiona Hesford, So Girl. Fiona actually sent me this pattern as a thank you and uh, so I was going to actually make it and uh, I was so excited about making this, uh, this Brompton bag but when I had a look how much fabric, so I was going to get the Brompton bag out of it then see what I've got left for rabbit clothes. Then when I looked at it I thought you know what I could get a garment out of this. And I had two thoughts. I thought, do you know the skirt that I made for Burns Night in the uh, tartan? I could make a pink one. And then I'd have a skirt that goes with my coat, my nice posh coat. And actually, if there is a tweed skirt pattern in the Luna book, do you remember I was showing you there was a tweed satchel and a tweed skirt? And Luna could have the tweed skirt as well. But then I was looking and it would look like there was a lot more than even just the skirts were. Well, there's a pattern that I only found out about in January. I don't know how long it's been out. And to access this pattern, you have to buy an e-magazine. And I've not bought one of these e-magazines before. And it was by um, Sew Over It, Lisa Comfort Sew Over It. And I bought this e-magazine. And how I found out about it, I'm really sorry, but I can't forget. I can't remember this Instagrammer's name. Um, she only found me in January and I followed her back. And I have haven't been like look we haven't been conversing back and forth enough for me to remember and I'm I just basically I had a look at this post I think she'd done a make nine and she'd bait her from last year and did like a a, a, a slideshow on Instagram of all the things she'd made I think in a make nine and then she'd listed them underneath and I spotted this jacket. I only saw it for a few seconds. And this is the only time I've chatted with her, actually. Uh, I said, oh, how much I really like the coat and whatever, the jacket. So um, I looked it, I tried to find it. I was, wasn't it finding it that easy? But I found it. it's basically in a magazine. I think it was issue six. And it's like a little smart bomber jacket. Now, I thought I'd had the pattern um, sent off. 
uh, between like at some point in January when I found out about it, I'd had it sent off to Guthrie and Gone and had it printed and it come back to me. So basically, last night, my husband was watching. Um, some Liverpool thing, it wasn't a match, it was some history thing uh, that, I don't know what it was basically, but it was on for quite a while. He said he was only going to watch 45 minutes of it and then he'll come and get me, but I think he ended up watching all of it and I know it was over an hour, but it, it allowed me to get on and do a few bits in here. Do you know what, do you mind if I just go and get a drink with all this talking? I'm getting a bit dried out, right, I'll be back in one moment. <laughs> Right, I'm back. I just got myself some water. I just re realised something when I went away. Um, I didn't mention the fabric I used. I did tag all this in my Instagram post and things, and it goes over to Facebook and stuff. But um, I used the cosy colours, and I bought this from um, Frumble Fabrics, but other places do sell it as well, but it does sell out quite quick. Um, I don't know what the colour's called. It's like a speckledy thing. Oh, actually, another thing I didn't mention about about it as well is it um on instagram and facebook well basically if you if i post on instagram to see the other pictures like i only put two pictures on you have to scroll across but when it goes over to facebook it just comes out you can kind of see a few of them unless you put like say if i put 10 photographs on instagram it won't come up the whole 10 on facebook you'll see a few and then you have to press the plus and look at more but if you saw the close-up picture up here i don't know if you know Notice, but um, I had a big scabby spot on my chin. Basically, I'd had this awful spot. Do you know when you keep, you have to, I know you shouldn't squeeze them, but you keep trying to squeeze it and it keeps going. And then it just kept coming back and coming back. And I had this big scab on my chin, basically. And, uh, but I was so excited. I'd just finished this dress, right? My face was sweaty. I just put it on. And when I had a photograph taken in it, because I was just so excited. And do you know what? I didn't even care. I think it was this side, wasn't it? I didn't even care about the scab on my chin at the time. I was just so proud of my dress. But uh, but but no, I didn't get anybody in. What would anybody say? They might think it's a mole or something. It wouldn't might not stand out as a scab, actually. But if you do notice it, that's <laughs> what it was. So, uh, and is that everything I wanted to say about this dress? Um, oh, actually, um, Karen from So Little Time mentioned um, how does it differ? from the billy because i've made the billy dress as well i've not made the billy sweater version and i've not made any sweater versions of this i've only made the dress versions and they are i suppose quite similar as in they're a jumper dress with a band on the bottom the pockets are very different um the pockets are, are in the side seam in this they're actually in the side seam kind of thing but in the billy they're in front so the only thing i find with this and the billy it's more obvious with the billy which is the front and which is the back uh the how i check with this which is the front and the back well it does still have back wrote in a friction pen inside <laughs> because i haven't pressed this by the way i didn't do any pressing along the way but um it still has got back wrote in it at the moment and i started my overlocking in the back on the neck so it's got the o so when you go all the way around you have a bit of overlapping of overlock stitches and that's how i know that's the back um of my garment i know a lot of people put um labels in and it's a great idea because you know which is the back but i've got sensory issues and i would end up cutting the label out if i put a label in you know the only places i could put labels are probably on the outside you know between seams the decorative decorative item got sorry um i get notifications coming up, up on my phone it's a bit distracting so anyway back to alfie and the jacket so uh basically i i did i was a bit bad because i haven't twirled the jacket right um i've looked at the size i know it's not going to be too small basically it's I've gone uh, I've gone for the size 10 in this jacket right um for the bust because it's woven I looked at the finished garment sizes for the smallest size and uh, and I think I could 
I could fit in it quite comfortably with the ease, but the suggest but the uh, bus size for the ten is bigger than mine, so it might end up being a bit big, right? But I've looked at everybody's um coat these jackets I, I, i'll try and put a picture of this jacket i've looked on the instagram posts and everybody's looks really really tiny so i think if i sized up i don't think it's really going to matter and if i want to put like a big jumper underneath it gosh i, can, I think i'm sure i can feel a pin here yeah do you know, do you know what i did when i uh when I was sewing this, right, it's a broken pin. When I was sewing this, I'm embarrassing. I just felt a stab. This is the first time I've worn it, actually. I've only put it on for a photograph and took it straight off. And I've just put this on for the video. I actually, it's the second time I've done this. I sewed over a pin in the overlocker and it's uh, and it's cut it, which you really don't want to be doing. But it hasn't damp done my... Um, blade too much damage it doesn't seem to be affecting it but um i found the end right um but i didn't find the other end and i've just found it it was just stabbing me it was where i tried to get the seam to match there <laughs> oh that is so funny so yeah don't sew over your pins but in my defense what had happened is i'll go really slow and i take them out but that one it had a white a head on it and obviously this is quite light and it had really like shoved in and I just couldn't see it because I am really careful of that but I just couldn't see it so do you know what I've totally forgot what I'm what I'm talking about oh the jacket the sew over it jacket so basically I've not twirled it I've gone out, I've gone and I've basically uh I didn't lay all the pieces out to check I could get it all out I just was basically moving it around, doing one piece at a time, trying to get the best out of this fabric, not knowing 100% if I was going to get this jacket out of it. But I thought, worst case scenario, I'll just have to make rabbit clothes with it, won't I, out of the pieces I've cut. But I was pretty confident I was going to get the jacket out of it. And guess what? I did it. I actually managed to get all the pieces out of it last night. So they're all pinned to their pattern pieces. They're all on the floor under my sewing machine. And um, the only thing I haven't cut out, um, so basically I traced, I lay the pattern pieces on, and I've cut out, I've marked darts, I've cut notches. The only thing I haven't done is... Um, chose a lining so i haven't i've traced the pieces i haven't chose a lining and i've ordered a zip online it recommends you order a 22 inch open end metal zipper and then they say shorten it so that that's as far as i've got with that i'm not absolutely desperate that i'm not going to guarantee that that's going to be my next dress making make uh but uh, well, the reason I was so eager to get that cut out is because I just wanted to see what I'd got left for other projects. Now, I tried to see then if I could still get the Brompton bag out of it. So I cut all my Brompton bag pattern pieces out, laid them out, and unfortunately, I wasn't going to get the bag out of it. So that's a shame, isn't it? So never mind, I'm not going to get the Brompton bag out of it. So what I'll probably do to ease the pain of that... I might at some point when I want to make it buy myself a real nice 100% wool tweed you know something that's a bit more expensive than the acrylic mix one so I end up with like this really high-end bag at the end of it so I feel you know quite proud of it so that will be something in the future when I've when I've purchased some more fabric so then what then I've worked out what I've got left to make rabbit clothes so I've ended up I'd already um got the pattern ready from when I made Luna in 2018 I photocopied some of the pages out of the book not all of them so I've gone on and I've cut out um a main fabric on the fold a a main fabric 
uh, two front pieces. It doesn't, I don't think it suggests it. I haven't actually read the book about the waistcoat actually, um, but I have um, cut out corresponding interfacing and I haven't chose a lining yet. And I haven't looked at buttons yet and what size buttons they recommend and things, but that's as far as I've got um, with that. And then I, um, I thought, well, what else can I make? um with the tweed well as i was saying in the book there is a tweed skirt and a tweed satchel so i've printed that i'm not going to get them because they're underneath the tripod i wonder what else is under the tripod there's basically a fair i've basically i've ended up this is all while my husband was watching that liverpool thing last night i photocopied basically all the pages uh, apart from the ones I'd already got uh, in the back of the first book um so um I'm going to be, be able to get a tweed skirt out of it a tweed satchel I'll be able to get some little shoes to match um so obviously this will be a girl outfit and what else could I make I could make Luna's coat again I could make this coat again couldn't I but in a pink version um that's an idea uh the, the top they're meant to wear the bunnies with the tweed skirt is actually like a lace cami like I photocopied the pattern out but I remember when I wanted lace because you can make a french knickers in lace so I did make a knickers look excuse excuse Luna sorry Luna but um this is very very stiff stuff this was the when I wanted lace uh, I did want to go and purchase it in a store. I think I went to Hobby Loft. That, it's so rough and scratchy. That was all I could get. I don't know how thick that is as well. Um, that's all I could get. I don't know if I've got any of that left. And I don't know if if it's big enough to get a cami out of it. But if I make the tweed skirt, she's going to need a top to go with it. And like, I know that you can use any old scrap of anything right but I'm very particular right about things I really am I'm a bit of a perfectionist I'm very particular I've got a strong idea of what I want and I want that you know what I'm saying that's why it takes me so long to get fabrics um I've really you know I've got a real strong taste in things and that's what I want kind of thing and I just won't make make it in any old thing you know I want to visualize the whole I don't know if it's come from being a quilter and being a paper crafter do you know all this like coordinating of colors and patterns and do you know what I'm like? I think I could because I come from that kind of background because like dressmaking really is more like making clothes for myself has been a later thing really in my you know crafting journey um I think I've carried all those things across into my dressmaking that I've got this strong idea and I, f I find it actually quite frustrating um buying fabric actually because I know what I want but I can't always get it and you know and then you don't and obviously shopping online is pretty tricky because you can think you know what it is and it gets to you and it isn't what you thought it was you know and that kind of thing you don't know what the stretch you know so it's you know there's a lot that goes into it you know you bit you know a bit more where you are when you go when I go shopping at the cotton patch for quilting fabrics you know that you know what you're getting kind of thing you know and yes it's a it's a whole different thing isn't it dressmaking excuse me I'll have one sip of water so back to Alfie again so well there's other there's other uh, patterns in the second book that I might be able to make tweed things pink tweed I'm gonna have so many pink tweed outfits aren't I and then I've got the third book coming I don't did I mean I don't know if I mentioned that last time but I've I found out there's a third book and the third book is coming right so I'm gonna have a look through that book so I'm not gonna make any strong decisions and maybe there's some things that I can make tweed things out of that as well so there's gonna be a lot of pink tweed I'm, I'm gonna be absolutely sick of it aren't I I'm not even gonna be wanting to wear my, my two 
jacket, my jacket that I've yet to make and my coat that I've already made because I'll be sick of the sight of this pink tweed, won't I, in the end? Uh, so um, I went, basically my mum, she's ordered the, the Lunar Lapping book. She messaged me to say how much she loves them and she's ordered the book. And she said, where do I get the, you know, the supplies from? Well, when I've made Luna, um, I've raided my own stash. But I think when I was at the Festival of Quilts, that's where I think I bought her wall felt. And it might have been actually from the designer. I might have got that from her. And I might have even bought the wool for the coat from the designer but everything else all the fabrics um like i didn't buy a kit but you can um i went on the designer's website a few days ago and you can buy luna as a kit you could get her you wouldn't have to even get the book you could just literally buy the pattern with the supplies but you're not going to get all the outfits are you kind of thing but um the designer does remake kits so you can buy kits of things that doesn't that doesn't come with the pattern if you've got the book that's what i found out from the website when i went on there i remember now i've only ever been on this designer's website once before and i bought a dressmaking pattern uh, and I've not, and I bought it, downloaded it, never made it, and I've not been back on that website since. Um, but I've been back on there, and um, what my mum's birthday is in February. And do you remember me saying I'd like to make or something, but now I'm not going to because of like you know not be able to measure her and things. I've actually bought her some supplies to make Luna from the website. Now my, I'm not ruining any surprises because my mum already knows. So I've got it here. So it, w it won't matter me showing you. Uh, and I suppose it will help my mum so she doesn't go out and buy anything. So I've bought my mum a whole kit. It doesn't have the instructions because my mum's going to have the book. A whole kit of things. And I chose the grey, the lunar grey. And then there's like, there's thread, different threads in there. Threads for sewing together, threads for the embroidery. There's black buttons. Um... I don't, I can see yarn. Uh, oh, the yarn is probably for the pom-pom tail. Yeah, because I haven't made out for your tail yet, right? Because it is optional, because I suppose it can affect how the clothes fit. But Luna has got a pom-pom tail. And there is some brown felt. Um, but I don't know what that, that's for. I've not used any felt on Luna and my Luna anyway, um, and there wasn't anything in the pattern to suggest that you use brown felt, so I don't know what that is, and, I, and there's some interfacing, and you do interface the, uh, it'd be, look, actually I'd love to feel the thickness of interfacing, because I've just used my own interfacing on my um, bunny's ears, I think the interfacing I've used on Luna, feels a bit stiffer than what I've used on Alfie but I'd, be li I'd like to know what the um maybe I'll have to I don't want to get my hand in there and have a feel so I've ordered that for my mum so if my mum's watching you've got this coming if you want it early if your book comes mum and you want it early before your birthday you can have it early I don't mind right and I couldn't help it I ended up spend spending a bit actually so uh I thought my mum might want to make the dress right and the coat and um so uh, that's what i've got her it's going to be this color so it's the spotty dress now in the book luna has got a spotty dress mine's flowered because i just use my own supplies and there's there's bias binding for the edge of the jacket there's press studs i don't know where you use oh the press studs they're probably for the back of the buttons and press studs I was thinking, did I use any press studs? Let me just take a jacket off. I don't think I did, actually. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Such a nice little jacket. Um, no, I haven't used any press studs. I've made buttonholes look and buttons on Luna. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, if it, maybe she's put press studs in it, the designer. Just in case some people aren't very comfortable with buttons and buttonholes, are they? So maybe it gives you a choice. And there's rickrack. Look, I've got rickrack on mine. The rickrack does look quite big. Look on the pocket. 
that's on my Luna. It looks a lot finer in the kits. So I, re I really hope um, my mum enjoys making her Luna and she's got everything she needs basically to make Luna. She's probably going to need her own needle. Maybe, mum, I'll, um, I'll put pop in a needle for you. I'll put it on a little piece of felt for you if you're watching me. My mum does watch my videos. I don't, she's, I think she does it in a mad spell. I don't think she watches them as they go. She just does a big marathon and catches up. I think she does that with Instagram as well. Sometimes I go on Instagram and I, remember, I can see my mum's been liking all my pictures. And it just say, says my mum's name, like, then all my notifications kind of thing. You know, she just likes them in one go kind of thing. So, uh, where, what else? And is there anything else? Yes, there is. When I was on the website, right, I did pop a little couple of little things in. And um, I uh, ordered two knitting patterns for these rabbits. Now, one, I have thought I was ordering print patterns, but... I'd ordered one was PDF that was for Luna for a cardigan and a scarf and the other one was a printed and it's a jumper for Alfie. Now I, I did attempt to start knitting this jumper when I went actually back upstairs and sat with my husband. Um, I did attempt after we'd had a copper and things uh, attempt to knit this but I wanted to do it in my cotton yarns because it is double knit yarn and my cottons are double knit and I just didn't have I wanted those colours and I had white uh, and I do have got an intent I have got a project I wanted to use the white on but I would have used the white but I just didn't have a, a decent contrasting colour to go with it maybe I could do it in acrylic I'll have a look at my acrylic yarns and maybe I could knock up a jumper for him but that that's another thing and I might let if my mum wants to knit a jumper I suppose my mum could borrow this I don't you're you allowed to do that surely I could lend my mum because you get all these copyright thing warnings don't you with patterns but can you share something with your own mother do you know what I'm saying, you know, but my mum's bought her own book, hasn't she? I don't know how it works, but I've downloaded the knitted cardigan. So I was going to print that out and maybe because my mum knits as well. She hasn't knitted in a long time from what I remember uh, or sewn in a long time from what I remember. Um, I think I remember I borrowed when I lost a spool off my sewing machine. I think this was in 2007. I when I'm uh, I asked my mom because we'd lost it in the house move in two thousand and five and then I just couldn't use my machine and the internet you just wasn't as good then and I borrowed this thing and mom wanted it straight back after I'd made these cushions because she said she wanted to sew something and I still don't think she's sewn anything not as far as I know well, she she has no I tell a lie she's made one thing I think last year I think she did so oh she didn't do it on a machine she hand sewed it. So, Mum, you've got to start using that machine. I'm going to make sure of it. when this lockdown's over, I'm going to come round. I'm getting the machine out and then you, I'm going to force you into using the machine. Because Mum was asking me actually about if you sew this on machine in hand. You can totally sew it by hand. And, and you know, a good bit of it is by hand because you do seaming on the outside. But you, But you can do the pads on the machine because that's an, an inside seam and the ears you you can do on the machine and I actually did the base on the machine but there is a Facebook group that um, I've seen and people are posting these bunnies and I've noticed some people don't they must do them all on the machine they don't have that seam on the outside they must want to whip them up quickly on the machine but even though I love whipping things quickly up on the machine um I love this hand stitching this seam on the outside I think it really adds to it and I think if I was to miss that out I think I would miss it say for people I don't know if you can make these to sell I really don't know uh, probably not but I think if you was making to sell maybe you would do whip it all on the machine wouldn't you maybe for speed but you know what when you've spent a bit of time slow stitching you can feel really proud of that can't you that you've sat and you've stitched every see you know little stitch by hand it, it's that love 
and care and attention hasn't it that's gone into it so i'm just looking at luna's legs actually and alfie said i think i've improved uh my stitching my hand stitching since, since 2018 actually it does look it doesn't look bad but i just think it, you can't probably can't see but it does i think it just looks a tad a bit better but you probably can't really see that uh so that's the knitting and then it's been deadly hasn't it right oh yeah i haven't told you else what i've bought right from that from the designer's website now in the book there is an armchair right so on the website there is a kit to get the exact supplies i do think you have to add a bit of plastic to it and stuff so do you know what to save all the faff sourcing the stuff myself i ordered the armchair kit for myself right and this is it this is it and it does tell you on the website out of all the lunar lapping makes this is the most complicated make of them all right but i'm feeling I'm, I'm not worried i'm not worried i've made a lot of bags really tricky bags so i'm kind of like i might be making myself look stupid now but i might end up th feeling like oh my gosh this is a nightmare but i'm feeling confident but that's where you've got to be haven't you you've got to be confident with your makes because only the fearless i got this line from ratatouille the disney movie uh only the fearless can be great right so i quite like that saying be fearless right and just have a go because that's how you learn so um right now <sighs> where are we going now am i still on luna yes i'm still on luna before i move on um there's a facebook group dedicated to luna and then i've gone in it um katie who watches my channel suggested me going in this group and then when i went in it i realized i was already in it but i don't actually i don't know i've been looking there but it was deadly it was really deadly because some people had knitted some really nice little clothes for their lunas and um and then they'd said all oh, what people said oh, where's that from where's that from and uh they'd bought a book that was basically making knitted animals that have knitted clothes and they think the clothes fit the only thing i'd say is there was people saying that they're very complicated patterns you need to knit them on four knee uh you know double pointed needles in the round and la di da la di da they're very small so i don't know if what uh what ply i try to dig around on amazon and i think it's like five ply like i've never knitted in five ply but it doesn't say that on the designer um on the book i'm not so basically i've ordered the book right from amazon until it turns up i don't know like i'm not worried about the double pointed needles because um I don't know if I've ever shown this on YouTube. But I'll put up if I can find a picture. I'll pop in a picture. I've knitted this doll. It's meant to be me, right? I know it's got scary eyes, but I've, that's what the the designers like, right? <laughs> the, the the eyes look a bit scary, but it's um uh, basically Arnie and Carlos pattern, and that's knitted on five needles basically in the round. There's no seaming; you just you work up the legs and the body and everything, and so I know I can do that. Um, but I did double knit. I worked on double knit and um so it wouldn't matter what you work and if you're making a doll and clothes as long as you use the same yarn and needles throughout the whole project you're going to be fine but because i know the way those patterns are at the moment they fit luna i know i've got to do them the way the designer in the book will tell me with the right yarn so it's um but you know what i might i might not end up using it for luna um you know i might just make a lot of sewn clothes i might make the the actual pattern from the designer the cardigan that i've ordered that the pdf and these jumpers may i might not end up using them i might knit those actual animals up maybe in the future and make the clothes kind of thing when i'm in the mood for it but i don't know how many non-christmas knitting projects i want to take on this year because there's some things i really want to make for christmas uh, i know it seems really daft because it's the start of february but i want to start early really I'm, i think i might knit christmas all year so i know i've got them done so i don't know yet it's a bit of non-knitting christmas knitting a bit of christmas knitting so is that where i'm at with that so yeah i'm getting the book 
the third book of the uh, Lunar Lapping book coming and I've got a knitted animal book coming and apparently the clothes fit but I'd probably have to buy a load of yarn in I don't know if I've got the right size needles you know it's a whole opens a whole new can of worms doesn't it basically so the thing that's happened because of this looking for this fabric it really made me think there's a term that sewers call uh, that have i think it's more in the dressmaking world shopping your stash right and i've heard this when i did this, um the seam work course which i'm going to talk about again uh, talk about in a minute i've mentioned this about six months ago but i'm going to talk about it in this video but late but in a bit um it's a really good idea to look through your stash of fabrics and see what you've got. So I didn't look through all my fabrics, like dressmaking fabrics, when I was sourcing this pink stuff. But um, I did look through a few of them. And I found um, a fabric that I bought from the NEC a show ages ago that I made pyjama shorts with. They were the first actual pyjama shorts ever made. I didn't use a pattern. I had these old pair of comfortable pyjama shorts. And... I basically, they were disintegrating. There were so many holes in them, but I hung on to them for dear life. I basically cut them up and I used it as a pattern. But um, they're, they're tw it's really funny. They're twisted. And um, I didn't notice that on my pyjamas when I used to wear them. But the seams come down the side and then they twist round to the front. Now that can happen with them. Um, bought garments, jersey garments. Basically, they cut them out some places. They have a machine and they put layers and layers of jersey on and they have a big machine that cuts it out. I don't know where I learned this, but it's something I learned. They cut it out, right? Now, you were really unfortunate if you get the ones that were at the bottom because have you ever owned a t-shirt, right? My, my um, my mother-in-law um, has picked up a few like supermarket clothes when the, the boys were very small for their birthdays and they've had t-shirts instead of the seams going here and here. My husband's just pulled up by the way so I might have to dash. One seam has come round the front like this and one seam has gone round like that for the back and uh so that means that one was one of the ones at the bottom of the bolt kind of thing so it's you know so that's what those pajamas must have been like and then i've copied it but they're really comfortable my husband doesn't like them i don't think he think i think he makes thinks i'm look they make me look i don't know what he make, thinks they make me look like but he doesn't like them but i like them for comfort but i found the fabric i used and i think i'm going to be able to get a jumper out of it hello Right, I'm gonna go and I'll be back later. I might, my hair might be a bit of a mess, but I'll be back. Right, I'm back. I've helped, you know, my husband, you know, by going, taking my car to the garage, coming back together. And then he was on the car phone, chatting away. And I said, I was driving past the co-op and I said, stop here, stop here. So I've run in the co-op, bought a few bits, frame in the fridge and stuff. And then I've dashed back in here. Actually, oh, I've still got my coat on, right. Where were we? Right, uh, let's have a look. I'm not gonna have to, uh, to check how long this video is now, but I'll just talk about what I've got on my list and then I'll leave you, but I'll just have another sip of my water. Right. Yeah, we're getting near the end now, I think. So now I want to chat to you about design your own wardrobe. Now I did a three week course uh, with seam work. Um, I got quite a good deal because I signed up early um, and then I was doing this three week course and I really embraced it and got involved in it all. But the reason I mention it is because they do it every six months. I think it's six monthly because it's like the change in season and I'm going to take part in it again. It's going to be very different for me because I've printed a lot of things out but um, I, I didn't know where this was. So even though I did my designed my wardrobe for the season, I didn't end up referring back to it, right? But I wanted to see how well I'd done with it. So I'll just hang on. I might have to forward this bit. I'll just find it. Right, I found it. Now a few bits have fallen out, right? Because I, I remember now a few bits falling out. But this is it, right? This is one of the pages. Now, uh, I'm going to stand up so I can show you. I really like the idea of a pink coat, a smart pink coat. Well, look, and let me move my move my bunny rabbits out of the way. Pop 
them over there, right? See, see here, look, there's pink coat, smart pink coat, yeah, long coat. I definitely made that. Now, look here, green gym outfit. I made the green Jaily leggings. I think I was wearing them in my last video. And I did make a little green top like this. But that was the one I was telling you about in my last video. That Because um, that isn't a pattern, by the way. That's just some woman on uh, Pinterest that I took as inspiration. But my top was so low, I was all boob. But I'm going to be remaking it. Well, I say I'm going to be remaking it. I'm, I'm thinking of keeping my leggings as... Um, house leggings though anyway so I don't know if I've got the need for the top but I have got more fabric I could make the um the rad pattern I spoke to you about which I'll speak to you about that again actually in a moment um I didn't uh I'm not obviously I'm gonna start the look of these pink trousers but they're not really that winter season are they so maybe that's why I wasn't interested in it. then I've got a picture of the linden sweatshirt I made that in a pink glitter I've got a picture of the Nina Lee um, Southbank sweater. Wow, I'm wearing it now. I made it, didn't I? Um, I've got a picture of the Cali shirt. Didn't didn't buy that pattern, so obviously haven't made it. Um, these are just cl clothes ideas. And these are the Carolyn pyjamas, and I made those. So I think... I did extremely well, really, with it. Um, that lady has got like a mustard thing on jacket, but I made a mustard cardigan, didn't I? Uh, a crochet one. You think you saw me wearing that? Not last video, the video before. Um, then on. Th let me just turn back one page. I think there's more um, mood board stuff here. And then on this mood board. That was the Cali shirt again. Obviously not very season appropriate really for the winter, was it? Something mustardy again. I do wear a lot of jeans and oh, skinny jeans and boots. And I think these were a lot of cream knitted jumpers, like camel cream. Uh, I didn't end up doing a small cream or camel jumper, but this was kind of a creamy dress jumper. And I have actually got um, fabric, oh there's one of those ones again, a creamy one. Um, I have got that fabric on order, but it's stuck in Germany, so it hasn't arrived. And um, and that again is the Nina Lee Southbank sweater, and that's all three versions there. So I think I did pretty well actually um, with doing that. And obviously maybe the, I had a real strong idea on what I wanted to make anyway even without taking part in the course because I didn't ever refer back to it. I've just crapped on and gone with the moment what I want to make and then I've ended up like making a lot of it, haven't I? So I'm going to take part in it again. I don't know how different it's going to be but there's the motion at the door. Hopefully it's my husband out there or my husband knows it's someone at the door. So, yeah, I'm going to take part in again. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different for me because I've got everything printed out. And maybe I'll have to reprint out like the mood board sheet because um, obviously I've used those so some of the things I've used I'll have to redo so yeah I've really like really like that um, yeah I'm, I'm just delighted with I really enjoy doing that actually and the reason I mentioned it is so they're signing people up again now I don't know if there's an introductory offer like what I got but when you when you sign up to this um, you remember for a whole year and it means you can download their patterns for free and things. The only pattern I've downloaded um, while I've been a member that I've actually made is the Astoria sweater and I really like that sweater. I think, I don't know if it's the fabric I've used because it wasn't a sweatshirting, it was more like a loop back kind of thing uh, but you needed something quite stretchy for that um, top. I think it's my favourite, you know. The favourite out of all these jumpers I've been making. I think it's my favourite. Even though I haven't been wearing it. You won't have seen me much wearing it. Um, but uh, I think it's the kind of thing. Do you know if I was going out for lunch with my husband? Because it's nice and fitted and things. 
I think I'd probably wear it for that kind of thing. And I'm a bit like that with my undie sweater as well. I kind of, it's like I'm sort of keeping them for best kind of thing. But doesn't mean I don't like my, I probably, do you know what, my lips? my least favorite one becky i'm really sorry about this because i've just watched becky notes from the sewing room video and uh she's made like eight linden sweatshirts right out of all the jumpers i've made i think the linden sweatshirt has been my least favorite now i'm not blaming the linden but becky lengthens her linden she says but if anything if i made the linden again and i think i will make it even though i say it's my least favorite i would shorten it um so it was more at like do you know where your jeans have the waistband so it just covers that waistband that's probably the length i'd prefer it so and i but i'm smaller than becky um becky i think is like 5 10 or 5 11 or something and i'm 5 4 so i'm much shorter becky if i ever meet you I'm putting some heeled boots on, I think, you know, to me, because you're going to make me feel very tiny. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so it's my least favourite. And I think my the um, as much as I like the pink glitter fabric, it's not got a lot of give in it, right? I think I'd like the linden more if I made it in a different sort of sweatshirt in fabric. Or I made it in a non-sweatshirt fabric, just like another kind of jersey. And I definitely shortened it. So I definitely will make the linden again. But at the, the current at the current jumpers I've made to date, because I I don't think I was making any alterations to any of these jumpers. Um, as much as I like altering lengths and things. I think the only thing I've done is when I've made the dress versions, I've, I've shortened the dress versions by like an inch and things. Because of the... the height that they're drafted to i think i put two, two inches off the billy and i think i've took an inch off this oh gosh i forgot to tell you actually about this i'm going back to this again now what happened is i took an inch off the front and back piece of this dress because the height that it's drafted to i think is five five and i'm five four because i want it to look the way the designer like decided kind of thing and but when i was like pinning all my pieces together the back piece looked three quarters of an inch i don't know what that is in centimeters um longer than the front piece where the seam met so um, i but actually measured that all the way across and i lopped it off then when i actually sewed all my seams together properly um one was hanging lower was it the front one of them i don't know the front or back was hanging lower and one they were perfect so I had to lop a teeny bit off. So, but then when I sewed it all together and I got the dress lying there, the back looked a little bit shorter, just lying on the table. But maybe, maybe that's why that one looked a bit longer in the first place, because it's got it's got to go further over your bottom, hasn't it? So I don't I don't know what happened there. So maybe if I ever make this dress again, I've just got to double check that the pattern pieces match up on paper. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake on my, because I've traced them. Maybe I made a mistake. I don't know. I mismeasured something. But I can't imagine that I only took a quarter of an inch off one and and an inch off another. So I don't know. But I'll go back to the drawing board if I ever make this again and just have a quick look at the proper pattern pieces and at my pattern pieces and measure them up against each other and see what's going on. So that is that. So I'm going to take part in that again. I think that starts in March or Fe mid February, I think. It might be the 15th, right? So, right mice right real mice now if you watch my vlogmas right you know that you know that's why i'm mentioning this it's only people that watch vlogmas will get this um that you remember i found some mouse droppings in here and things and we set some traps and humane traps well we never ever caught anything but um one morning i got up and my middle son said oh uh, bella this is our one of our cats one of four cats uh, she caught a mouse last night on the landing and uh so oh gosh Declan you know like my husband asked him what happened and he said yeah I made her let it go and and uh and it ran into the bathroom and went under the bath 
so we've there's the you know i don't know if this mouse ended up dying because the cat got it like, i don't want the mice to die you know i want you know i want them to live and just take them to the park or something but uh yeah i thought oh gosh you know bella had it and then it's gone so i don't so we might have some dying mouse rotting somewhere or the mouse might have been hardly injured at all and is recovered and is running freely so there you go so we we have there has been another a mouse in the house <laughs> excuse the term and um they uh yeah but they're not going in the trap so and i did read a review on these traps and said they were a load of rubbish but you know my cats are probably better at catching mice aren't they there's a slow to motion at the door i really hope it's my husband coming in and out actually right so that's the nice right now back to the rad pattern the 25k now i haven't made it all you know from previous videos i trace the pieces side of my size trace the pieces and i've got I've got, I probably have got some fabric, maybe the old green stuff from the leggings I made and I've got that blue. I said, I told you it was bright blue and I'd have to be a bit brave. I've looked at it when I was shopping my stash for these clothes. I found it and I thought, what the hell is this? And it's actually a lot darker than I remember. So it's not as bright as I thought. So maybe I'll be making it in that. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> I just want to apologize right now to get this pattern for free you have to join a face the rad pattern facebook group right and in the kind of like notes and news and things you can get a code and then go on their website and then you have it for free now i didn't actually look at the group right now i apologize if you're in the group but uh there there's you've got to be i think open-minded right to be in this because i've since since telling you all about it and telling to go to the group i've been looking in the group and there's a lot of flesh you know there's a lot of ladies that um make underwear from the rad patterns and put quite kind of sexual kind of poses uh on this group you know lying on beds and you know and all this right and i've even seen pictures now not people wearing them right but just pictures of the underwear they made and um they're like crotchless pants and there's even bras that they're like they come round here but there's like nothing in the middle right and uh, i did i see and i think yeah there was a there was, i'm sorry to this lady if you watch my video right but uh you know, I'm not I'm not saying anything bad, but um she's just there in this bra with her boobs just out, right? Uh she's made. And it's just, you know, I was just a bit shocked. I'm not saying it's wrong, right? But I was just a little bit shocked, right? And uh so yeah, so yeah, basically. So if you have joined that group because I've suggested it and then, you, you know, it's that kind of thing offends you, I'm very sorry. But I didn't know. All I've found out, I found about, out this pattern uh, from another YouTuber and um, I went and got it myself. And this is what I've, I've since found out. So I'm very sorry, but I just thought I'd give it a mention. Right. Now, the final thing, right. It is a bit funny, right? And I've had such a giggle with it. Now, I ordered something, right, from... Uh, it's basically for retail. You, you'd have it in shops, so it's for retail purposes. And I ordered it, and I thought it would be a really good idea of showing you things I've made, right, without having to model them myself. Because sometimes I've tried to put them on my dress form and I haven't got a dress form really, it's like for legs, it's more like just hip and upper body. It's better for skirts, dresses and tops and things. I don't really use them all that much. I only, I've only really used them to photograph things really and drape things on them like a clothes horse kind of thing but i don't really use it all that much for fitting they've been good for taking photos i've shown i've made a toile and i just want to put the toile on but um but they're not good really for bottoms so uh so i've ordered this thing from a retail place and uh and it came yesterday and i, I just i couldn't wait to show it you and for a giggle 
and I opened it upstairs in the bedroom in the post camera, I took it upstairs, I opened it and uh, my husband's up working from home most of the time and he said, uh, and I said to him, right, I'm going to go and put this in the kitchen and um, for like, you know, so when the boys all start coming in for lunch, just, I just want to see their reactions, right? And bear in mind, I've got three teenage boys, right, I'm just going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> right so this is what i've bought so when i make pants i can show you what they look like on without having to model it myself what do you think i think it's fab. <laughs> i think it's brilliant i've actually put a pair of pants on her to hide her modesty the only thing is uh, at the moment we she's probably she's si similar kind of measurement to me about here and because i'm like i kind of fluctuate my waist goes up and down a couple of inches my my waist is probably at my largest it would be so at the moment the waist comparison is quite good and this high um hip measurement's quite good but she's a bit more voluminous she's got i think either two inches or two and a half more Bum, basically she's got a bit she's a bit more voluminous on her bottom than i am so i did worry when i measured her yesterday my husband was really giggling actually because i had her like on the kitchen island like with no, no pants on and i was measuring her and then i was measuring right i had the tape measure from the middle of her crotch down here and i was measuring up to her belly button and then there i am on myself doing the same and actually her measurement from midway there to her belly button i think is the same as me so that's quite good isn't it so the height of the pants is pretty kind of fitting but obviously she's a bit more you know fills them out a bit more but they're quite but just goes to show you could um go wear this size and be a few inches bigger couldn't you than what i i am kind of thing so uh yeah so yeah but it was so funny because my eldest came in first and it was like i tried to just like not react and just act really normal and then uh and he's like what on earth is that you know and, uh, and then the middle son come in and uh, he had the same reaction and it was so funny then when the th the third son come in he's the youngest he's he's near he's 13 nearly 14 uh then when he walked in and he obviously declan was like looking the middle one was looking at him the 16 year old looking for his reaction and they just looked at each other and burst out laughing and it's quite funny because my eldest uh, says because uh, he um you know pre-corona he's like a really popular boy and he's got like a lot of friends and he's always going to people's houses they're always inviting him over and he stops over and all sorts so he's got to see a lot of families and he says right i don't know what to make of this actually he says that he thinks that uh, out of all the families he's met he thinks our family is the weirdest you know what do you make of that but i suppose you're the mother of the family doing things like this doesn't really help the cause does it to make us like normal right so yeah it's not i'd be you probably you're probably not going to find many people with one of these in their homes are you really so maybe my son's right you know but you know normal's overrated isn't it so <laughs> anyway so i hope you're going to enjoy it so what i might do is um i want to, actually i wanted to put the thong uh, on this to show you but because the, I have actually put this on my dress form in a fashion and kind of showed it before. But, um, yeah, I wanted you to see the thong that I made. Like, you know, I've, I know I've showed it you like this, but obviously I've not showed it you one. But I couldn't actually find it. Maybe it's gone through the wash, I don't know. But these are the Megan Nielsen Acacia pants. And I've made, I've made these definitely twice. This might have been my second pair. The first pair I made... Uh, I've made them three. I think I've made them three times actually. But I did um, a binding uh, 
a fold over elastic on my third pair. My first pair was out of an old super dry vest, a really stretchy vest. This was out of some Tillian, it was the Tillian the Buttons collaboration with um, the Craft Cotton Company um, fabric, a jersey, just a cotton jersey. And I made the cocoa dress um, with this fabric and I made the square neck top by I think the Friday Pattern Company with it and then I got some pants out of it so I did really well with that fabric so maybe while I'm talking about all these different things there might be photographs popping up if I can find them sometimes if I've made things a while ago I can't always find the photographs sometimes if I want to find something on uh, that's like Facebook if I kind of put Periwinkle Cottage Crafts and then I put like I put uh, Luna straight after it um, you might not get all things that are mine, but I did find my pictures from, because Katie that follows my channel was asking, uh, she wanted to see Luna's tail and I was out and about shopping and I had to go to the bank and things. And um, so I had a quick look and I, and I managed to find the photographs from 2018 and I could show her the tail because I wasn't in to show her. So, yeah, so hopefully from going on, because I make a lot of pants, it, it, you've probably discovered from watching me, um, I really like to make buy fabric in for a project in mind, uh, make that and just see what else I can get out of it. So if it's like, you know, cotton jerseys or something suitable for pants, I can get pants. If it's kind of sweatshirt in, it'll probably more go to dog jumpers, that kind of thing, the dog, dog jumper kind of pile. And, and I suppose if it's like woven things, it's good for the little clothes for the rabbits and the animal you know like toy toys and things can't it and scrunchies and things you know there's you know different fabrics are good for different things with your scraps and stuff so when it's cotton obviously you can go into your quilting bits and bobs can't it so i hope you like what i've bought to show you today so hopefully i'm gonna have some more things to show you um like i say i don't know if the the coat the sew over it coat is going to be my next make. I'm not too sure yet. Um, I might make something else, I don't know. Um, and I don't know what exactly clothes I'm going to be making for Alfie because I'm waiting for that other book to come. I don't know if I'm going to be knitting for him because it all depends on my yarn. So yeah, it, everything really at the moment is a little bit up in the air. All I knew is that I'd wrote down, or I'd typed down everything I wanted to include in this video and I just thought I've got enough to talk about too. So that's where I'm at the moment. So I look forward to seeing you next time and you can see what what I've been making, what I've decided to do in the end. So thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.